Hi YouTube, my name is Christian Bunzel and today I'm coming back with another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a realistic ocean slash water scene in 3ds Max. Now, creating water scenes and animating water is, for me, a lot hard because, you know, it's just getting the movement to look natural and right. And there's a lot of plugins out there, but I've actually found a really cool one and you just, it's called Hot for Max. And if you search it on Google, you get this code link right here. And you just go click on it. This might take a little while. And you go to Downloads. And as you can see, we have our three builds here. And uh, there's just find your version of 3ds Max. Um, there's support for 2012 and there's support for 2011. And it's a pretty small file. And it's the one really good thing about Hot for Max is that it's free. It's awesome and it's one of the best free plugins I've ever used in 3ds Max. So just download that and get it installed and go into 3ds Max now and let's just go to our perspective view and I'll just zoom out a little bit here. So what I'm going to do first is go to my create panel and just create a simple plane and you want to make this pretty big because you want enough space for your ocean to simulate and we'll get into that later. So we have that. It's pretty simple. And I'm just going to change the color because it's ocean themed. Just change it to that. And it's good. Alright, so we'll just zoom out here a little bit because uh, we want a little space. I'm just rotate my camera a little bit. Alright, that's good. And uh, this is just a simple plane. This is like, if you don't know how to do a lot of this, you should probably watch some basic 3ds Max tutorials. But we're going to be going through some of the basic parts pretty quickly. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to catch on. All right, so now we're gonna go from our create panel to our modify panel. And we have our plane selected, we go to our modifier list, go down and we see Houdini Ocean here. And we just click on that. And as you can see, nothing's happened at all. That's because if we go over to right here, our, we need to change our settings. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change my resolution to about 21. That'll change how, uh, how it looks. So looks a little bit better there. And now what we're going to do is just, you can play with these settings and see what you like. I have some good settings for, for what I like to do, which is just create a basic wave movement. But it depends on what kind of ocean you're creating. And the only setting you don't want to mess with right now is time, because I'm going to get into time later. And time will basically be what you do to keyframe the movement of the ocean. So just mess around with your properties here and I'll come back once I found something that I like to use. Um, and you know, this could take a while for anybody because you want to get this looking really nice because this is a powerful plugin. So I'll be back. Okay, so now we have our settings pretty well. Uh, I think they look good. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and set up how my perspective is gonna be because kind of want this pointing towards the sky, so we'll just kind of angle it up like that. And let me just go to render this and make sure. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so now we have that. So the first thing is that it doesn't do anything. It's not animated. So what we're gonna do is make sure your time is set at zero. I told you not to mess with that. Uh, so we'll hit auto key over here, and it's at zero here, but now let's go to 300 or whatever the end of your composition is and we'll change the time to about 32 and this is how fast the waves will move but it depends on your time and what you're going what look you're going for so we'll set it to about 32 for mine so if we just turn auto key off so we don't mess anything up we can see the wave looks pretty good let's just play this and as you can see it just kind of speeds up and then slows down and so that's because we have a timer map problem. So have this plane selected and go into your graph editor and track the curve. And if we just go down to modified object, Houdini Ocean, and go even further down and we go into time, we can see that the curve is curved. So we don't really want that. So we'll just go ahead and we're gonna just get this clicker here and just select your whole curve and then you can see this linear segment here and we'll just click that it's linear now so if we go back it just it's a constant speed and really that's the way it should be 
Um, because oceans don't really look very natural otherwise. So, now what we're going to do is make a light in the scene. And a light will really help improve some of the stuff you, uh, it'll make it look a lot better. So, we're going to go and we're going to get our light in it. You can use whatever kind of light you want, but I'm going to use a daylight system. Yes, and I'm going to go to a different view because it's very hard to edit these in perspective view. So I'll just drag it here and just drag it up. Looks pretty good. Alright, so we have that and I'm going to just unclick so I don't create any more lights that I don't want to create and go in our perspective view and we'll render it again because I'm just going to be showing you. And now it just looks very washed out like it's on the face of the sun. And we don't, we'll fix this later, but right now we're not going to mess with this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a special material to our waves so that way it looks a lot better. So we'll just press M on our keyboards and then bring up the material editor. And the material editor is where we're going to be making the best touches on our, our, on our little C scene here. So you want to find the arc and design uh, uh, materials and okay so now that we've applied our arc and design material we have this beautiful C scene here and it looks looks awesome the reflections are coming off and everything and looks good but we have this gray spot and we also have some issues that you might have um, uh, so first issue you might have is that you don't have mentor ray selected as your default renderer and that can allow you not to find the arc and design plugin so just go to render setup and go to the very bottom here and just go to assign renderer and for production just make sure it's hit on mental ray and that'll be good and it's already on mental ray so it won't show up for me so we have all that and you know everything so far is coming together but we have a couple problems so the next thing I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go back into my for a view, select my light, and just make sure that you have sunlight selected as MR Sun and skylight selected as MR Sky. And make sure your position is on manual and that will allow you to manually edit it. And that's, those are some uh, common mistakes people might make and you know, I thought they were obvious but then I thought over it and I was like, you know, some people don't know. So I have to put that in there. So the next thing we're gonna do is fix these uh, gray areas that we get when we render it. And, you know, it doesn't, doesn't look very good. So I'll fix that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my skylight parameters and I'm just gonna scroll down here and it's, there's a lot of stuff you can kind of mess with, but first thing is I'm gonna turn on the multiplier 2.5 and that'll make the water look like it's not really just sitting on the you know face of the sun here. And if we render that back in this view, if you render that in that view, it looks better. It takes a little longer, but it looks better. And it's, you know, that's a little bit, it looks better. Um, so let's just go back to our light here. And we'll go back to our modifiers. Okay, so now that we go to our Mr. Sky advanced parameters, we have all of this, and you want the height to be negative. And it may sound weird because generally when doing 3D, negative values are frowned upon, but really this will help your render a lot and that'll lower the sky. So we'll just go back to this and we will just quickly render it out. And as you can see, the sky is in the background and everything as it should be. So now this is the part where I kind of can't teach you how to do it because mainly it's just about your settings and what you want to do. And you know, your settings may be different from mine, because mine are, you know, I, I'm not even going to say it again, I've said it so much, but let's just get on with the rest of it, and I'm just going to be going, walking you through some of your render settings and what you should be rendering out as. So the first thing, uh, all looks good, and you can actually extend this C out to make it look like it's extending off into the distance, not just quitting, but that's it's just extending the sea. It's just extending your plane, and it'll it'll account for that. But we have this light, and you can rotate it so that way it just kind of kind of falls off into the camera here. So we have perspective here, and we'll just lower that. And if you lower the light, you know, angle it down. Yeah, right. 
right there. And as you can see, if we render that out, it looks it's dark. And that's because I placed it wrong, but I'll just hopefully undo all of that because that was really stupid. It's all that. Alright, so that's good. Alright, so um looking good again. And that's uh, all right, and um, let's go to our perspective view here, and that's pretty much done. Your, your waves are moving, everything's looking good, and just go to our render setup here, and uh, render it as what you normally have, but make sure that it's an active time segment, because otherwise, you're going to end up with something that's really, it's just one frame, and that's going to really suck. But um, yeah, this is all really good, and you can take it in After Effects and apply a blur, so that way the background is... Uh, has some depth, but uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you for watching my tutorial. Uh, please subscribe and follow me on Twitter. So this is Christian Munsell saying goodbye.